This is we're getting like bands here that remind me of Hurricane Harvey. It's not going to be that bad. And all that. Oh, hey, everybody. What's up? We're live. Uh, we're just talking about the rain. Tropical Storm Beta. Beta. Not to be conf- uh, confused it's with Tropical beta. Storm. Beto. Totally different Tropical Storms. It's a beta-ass storm. Beta-ass storm. I said this on no layups. Do you know what beta means in Urdu? What does it mean? It doesn't oh. mean underwear? No. Oh, you don't listen. Oh, you don't listen to the podcast. No, I'm not on that podcast. Oh, thanks, buddy. You don't pay me. You don't pay me to I be listen- on that podcast or this podcast. I listen to your podcast every single day. I was watching uh, In the Clutch the other night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Every time I get a notification, I watch it. What did you think of uh, of Bobby's take on, uh, on Skip Bayless? I didn't hear it. I didn't hear that part. Oh, interesting. Yeah. What did he say? I don't, I don't want to repeat it. Okay, go find it in the clutch. You can uh, <laughs> subscribe to that podcast and find it and get Bobby's take because Bobby's the best. Uh, did I did I just wake up? No, I just got new lighting, so now you can really see how old I look at night. <laughs> Man, it does that's look, cold. It does look a little bit like you woke up from a nap. Dang, that's I'm cold. I'm lie. all showered. I just didn't put any product in my hair because I put product mm. in my hair every single day now, so I got to give it some break at night. You know what I'm saying? And why are you putting product on your hair every single day, Raheel? Oh, because you can watch me doing sports on NTV. What? NTV. Not to be confused with MTV. This is N as in Nancy. NTV. Uh, so, yeah, I'm doing sports there. I go every single day. I get to write my script and do all that and then head over to your studios and record, and I, I head home. It's pretty It's pretty cool. Do they call you One Take Raheel yet? Not yet, not yet, but I usually, usually I'm done in under six minutes. Like, I'm in, I'm out, I'm good, let's go. Do they call you five-minute Raheel yet? No. How, do that's they call some, you hot and ready Raheel yet? That's some, you might want to ask somebody else. Uh, she she calls me that. Oh, my. Oh, dang. That is it's, awkward. I'm talking about my game. trainer. I'm talking oh, about my trainer, okay, interesting. because... Yeah, because I'm usually gassed after five minutes. That's why, Jose. I thought this was getting a little risque. No, no, I don't have a trainer. You think my cheap ass is going to get a trainer? No. (laughs) No, I'm good. I'm good. Bobby, what was your Skip Bayless uh, take? I You're going to make him type it out? (laughs) Yeah, type it out. Type it over here. (laughs) Bobby, jump in. (laughs) We can send him the link. We're going to have Jay Arnold on with us today. Friend of the show, former Texas A&M football player, But just an overall great dude. He was working the sidelines with uh, Thomas Campbell, who did photography for the Roughnecks. I was almost going to call him Rednecks. That would have been horrible. Mm. (laughs) No, terrible. Mm -hmm. With the Roughnecks. And uh, he was, like, helping him out. So you probably – I don't don't think you met him, but you probably saw him. He was the biggest dude there that wasn't on the field. He's a great guy. No, I I, 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 I I can't believe you didn't meet him. Mm. Uh, but he's going to join us to talk about this Whataburger Frankenstein sandwich that he has. It's incredible. So we'll talk to him a little bit later. In about uh, 15 to 20 minutes, we'll talk to him. So, yeah. Well, we're, man, we just got sidetracked. This tropical storm, please be safe out there. If you're listening. Turn uh, around. Live, don't yeah, do not Yeah, but I am going to go drive right after this podcast. Why? Because oh, I want to see if my neighborhood's flooded or not. It's not flooded. Do you? I love watching... Hurricane tropical storm footage. Am I the only one? Yes, you're the only one. Why, Dude, why would I, I enjoy it. that? I don't know. I just love watching that footage. Like seeing how powerful the ocean is, seeing how powerful the Bay Area can be. It's so much fun. Like all morning long, I was just on different hashtags. And if you do, we got to figure out a, a, a hashtag like Harris County needs to send it. Like, <laughs> hey guys, we're going to do TS beta, right? Because if you just click hashtag beta, it's horrible. It's not a good hashtag. There's just too much, uh, too much stuff. But you want you want our local meteorologist as they're finishing their reports to be like, please use the hashtag HTX beta. Yeah. To, to drop some dank uh, beta hurricane beta, beta memes, please. Yes, please. Like, let's go ahead and do that. I wanted to do some memes today, but I didn't want to get in trouble. You know. <laughs> There's just too much at, at stake now. You so just I, got a job, buddy. Don't yeah. Know. And this is a part-time job, okay? Get so. a nickname first before you start doing uh, uh, questionable before things Dayton. on the timeline. Yeah. And it's the same one. I think I shared this with you when Laura rolled through. I wanted to do the Jordan Scotty Pippen meme. And no. you know where uh, Jordan is uh, Jordan's on Pippen's shoulder. It's right after game 
uh, game five, oh, the, flu right. game, the flu game, the, the flu, flu game. game, the flu game. It was actually just I was hungover game, but I wanted Bad to do pizza game. Yeah, pizza game. Oh, food poisoning. I wanted to do a meme of that and have COVID nineteen over Jordan, and then have tropical storm slash hurricane season mm. of Scottie Pippen. Mm-mm. But see again, it's mm. I think it's too insensitive. So I didn't do it. It would have it would have been very insensitive. I would have made I would have been leading the pack to get you canceled. <laughs> I've, I've already been canceled, Jose. Well, sort of. Yeah, I, I think I'm I'm pretty canceled. I don't know. What, what do you think? I'm I'm canceled. I got canceled I mean, off an entire station. No, Bill asked if I drink kombucha every day. I don't got it like that. Dang. It's my draw my it's my podcasting drink of choice though. I will say that. It is. It's so good for you. It's so good for but, you. Uh, I don't drink, drink it every day. It. I'm glad you save your kombucha for this show. Oh, also for the Thursday show. But yeah. Oh, whoa, watch out. Mr. Two twice a week. Uh El Jefe says Raheel's Raheel's ass is about to get stuck in the flood because he wanted to see better hope Steve Champion is out there. Campion is out in these streets to save him. <laughs> this man no need no saving all right i'll be fine i'll be fine because i will not go into the water i just want to see how far didn't, it's come didn't he win an emmy or some award for doing that that mid flood rescue yeah he won the uh savior of the year by red cross see i'm actually being serious <laughs> over here you gotta drop some red cross bs on me no i don't know i, I don't... think he won an emmy Really? For what? Outstanding life shot? Outstanding, uh, uh, outstanding, outstanding, I don't know, something. See, I do the rules of nature apply there because in, when you're doing like nature filming or nature photography, Nat, you know, on Nat Geo, they always talk about this. They can't get involved with what's happening on the other side of the lens, right? Like if a lion is about to attack a baby giraffe. They can't stop it. That's it. Like, they cannot interfere with nature. Do the same rules apply for local TV news reporting? Like, should Steve had just let nature run its course there? Was he wrong for stepping in there? (laughs) No. He did the the right thing in, in helping somebody. I absolutely agree. I On the human level, he did the right thing. But I'm saying on an Emmy level, because they have to take everything into account, are they going, hey, man, you know what? You should not have saved that guy because that's not your job. Your job was to report the news. Mm. This is on a on a level I of mean, awards. You're the newscaster, not me. I'm just a little old radio producer. Maybe they'll let me, once I get out in the field, they'll tell me, hey, remember, this is like nature documentaries. Do not interfere with nature, <laughs> even if something is happening. <laughs> let him die. Let him die. No, I don't think it's like that. I don't think it's like that. Um, okay, so if you have do uh, if you have questions, please jump in. We will be uh, answering them throughout the show. Jay Arnold's going to join us in about ten minutes. We're going to catch up with him. I want to get his water burger sandwich thing. This is incredible. Uh, I got to find the picture of it too, so I'll get that in a second. But let's start with something that we teased last week, Jose. This is going to carry a lot of the conversation. And uh, uh, Jay, if you haven't watched this yet, you have like ten minutes to figure this out and watch it. <laughs> But The Social Dilemma on Netflix, it is a great documentary. Uh, it is so damn good because it exposes everything that we we kind of knew it was happening, but on the record with people that worked at these companies. Shout and out not Edward just, Snowden. Yeah. It's, what's up, Edward? Did you, you didn't listen to the Joe Rogan Experience Edward Snowden podcast yet, right? And I don't think you will either, but it's really good. That episode no, is good. I, I, I wanted to, but I saw it was like two and a half hours, and I was like, ah, I'll get to it eventually, and eventually never came. Yeah, and that was one of their shorter podcasts. Like, Joe will go four Oof. hours sometimes. Yeah, it's no no one needs long. that. No, one, I agree with you. It's really long sometimes, but it, it was good. So we got that, and then we got the social dilemma, right? So with Edward Snowden, he just pointed out, like, the government is tracking everything on a meta level, right? So they could go in and say, oh, yeah, Jose did call this person. Or, yeah, Jose was here, right? Like, that data is available for them. But they're not actively, for the most part, they're not actively looking through your files. Um, They can. They definitely can. Absolutely. But they're not actively doing that for you. They're just collecting all this data. They're just taking it all in, taking it all in, right? That was my understanding. And Nabil, who's listening to the podcast, he actually works in this field. So he might uh, clear some stuff uh, stuff, stuff up for us. Uh, And he sent me some text messages regarding this. It's crazy. But the social dilemma specifically on Netflix, 
This talks about what social media sites know specifically about you, how they track things about you, how they track ads, how they serve you ads, how they can predict your behavior. They take all of this from your device. When you use the app, they learn about you. And there's an algorithm and machine learning that just gets better and better at this. And it just becomes a cluster F. It was scary how much they know about us. Working in social media before, I like I've run ads for companies. I'm running ads right now for companies. The amount of categories that you can pick for ads is limitless. You can do whatever you want. You can, if, if you want somebody that's interested in kombucha and likes Mexican soccer and mediocre podcasts, we can find that. It's crazy. Those so, all sound great for me. Yeah, I'm, I, you would get served an ad for this podcast, but it's just <laughs> wild. So that's just the premise of it for people that haven't watched. And then to hear it from higher ups and not just some, you know, low dudes like us that are just trying to make a name sometimes to hear it from people that have a lot. I'm sure they had some like uh, they, they've had some clauses in their severance packages where they're not allowed to talk about it. And I'm, I'm sure they broke it. But man, it was crazy, dude. It was so crazy. So that's the premise. Throw out your thoughts on this and we can discuss. So like <laughs> I thought like what would you even call it? The little narrative like storyline that's tied to it. I thought that was super cheesy. I could have done yeah. without that. If, if there's anything that 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 I would take away from it. Uh, or or say that I didn't enjoy about it was that because of how dramatic it, mm -hmm. they were, uh, but man, just like I think I think you you said it best. We kind of knew already in some aspects how how we're monitored, but the way it was broken down and the specifics of how it's affected us politically was very was very daunting. It was very mm -hmm. like like what the, like it it made me paranoid to be on my phone. Like telling you guys about w what I was watching while I was watching the documentary, it almost felt like I wasn't supposed to be watching that. Mm -hmm. And but just it, go ahead. But it confirmed it, right? Like we've seen in the last five years or so, it, it's gotten out of hand politically. It's never been yeah. this bad. And yes, there is a president in charge that has riled up a fan base and and has has you know said a lot of rhetoric that isn't good for people right in terms of like the relationships you have and people are all pumped up about that yes there is that but then there's also the actual social media strategy behind all that from companies because they're like hey you know what people love they love conflict so if we serve jose something that we know that will trigger him and get him into a big thread he's probably going to come back and check on the app which means a more chance for you to get uh, advertising right more revenue for them so to see them play this and the, the one guy who said this is going to bring on a civil war, it sounds absurd, right? It sounds like right. a civil war, but we can see the seeds of this planted right now. It, it has never been this dis, uh, divisive. I don't I, I can't remember a time before it was like you're Republican, you're Democrat. Cool. It has gone to the next level. And then like to see it play out, you're like, oh, this makes sense. This makes so much sense right now. Why it's happening. Yeah, and, and uh, Johnny mentions uh, the scariest thing is uh, when you start seeing ads for things that you're talking about. He mentions watching, like, ad getting ads while he's with his significant other. That happens all the time. Like, there's the example that I've given you before. I think on the podcast, even where there was, a, I was watching a TV show in Spanish, and they mentioned a brand called uh, Charlie Sport, which is a sporting brand uh, that's out of Mexico. And the next day, I was getting ads for it on Instagram when I've never in my life Googled them or had any interest in, in that brand. And it's, it's like, there's stuff like that all the time. I was off Instagram for the better part of two years. And when I came back, like I was just so like, so taken aback by how like ad oriented and it was already yeah. starting to get that way uh, before I got off it, but there are just so many ads. And if you click on one thing, you are you are screwed for the rest of the day. Yeah. Like the first the first the first time I started really noticing that was after the pandemic started, and I was just getting a relentless amount of ads for face masks, and it just became to to, to the point where it's like, why 
am I on? Uh, why am I on Twitter or am I on my uh, on my Chrome app looking at this stuff and then it pops up all over all over the place on Instagram and Facebook? And man, it's just it all makes sense. Like it's it's all, all it's, it's all intentional. It's all really frustrating. It is, but you live with it like i no, i haven't yeah. deleted i haven't deleted no, instagram right. yet i haven't deleted twitter yet i'm not going to delete twitter i love twitter that's my favorite app and twitter hasn't been as bad in terms of advertising there's some days where it's worse than others but it's not overwhelming like instagram but facebook is next level and i, I can tell you again running social media campaigns one of the best things you can do right now, one, disable your mic when you're not using the app, okay? It sucks. You have to, like, keep enabling it if you use pictures and all that. Disable that. Disable the mic, okay? That's going to help clear up a lot of your feed. The second thing is learn about your behavior, right? Facebook, you can you can find out your profile that they've compiled about you. Just learn about it just to see what kind of profile you have in terms of an advertising uh, profile. Then the third thing is when you see an ad and you find it strange or you find it like kind of kind of perfect for you, click on the ad and see why they're search or why they're serving you that ad. Okay, because you have that option. You can always click on it and say, "Hey, why am I seeing this ad?" And it'll tell you. Uh, Nestle's looking for people that are 28 to 64 and they live in Houston, Texas. When they give you specific things like that, then that means those people aren't listening to your mics. Usually when you know that they're buying these uh, buying these ads that are the mic related, the behavior related, you'll just see people, you know, in America, 25, 34, and that's it. You won't see any other categories mentioned. So it, it, it's weird, man. It is incredibly intrusive, but it's a necessary evil for a lot of people, right? Like for me, Google, I'm never going to give up Google. I know they're spying on me. I know they have access to my emails. I know they have access to all of my contacts. If they wanted right now, they could spam each and every one of you b because they have the access. But that's a necessary evil because it, it's more gain for me because of the Google Photos app, Google Drive, uh, G Gmail, obviously. It's just worth it to go ahead and give up some of that privacy for a greater user experience when I'm on uh, those apps. Yeah, man, it's it in like literally. I think I watched that on on Wednesday, and on Thursday I was be I was very self conscious about the amount of time I was spending on my phone, and I felt pretty yeah. satisfied with it. But after Thursday, like Thursday, I just kind of started doing like my my normal routine with my phone. Yeah, and that's other thing. Not, nothing's going to change from this documentary. It's real. It's a really good documentary. It's eye opening. It points out everything. But my behavior hasn't changed much. Yours hasn't changed much. For people that are watching, I don't think it's changed much. Hell, we're getting comments on Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube. Like, our people are consuming this. So, man, it, it's nuts, dude. It's so crazy. And it, it, it's not going to stop. I don't think it's ever going to stop. I know Congress tried. And they'll they'll try again once another big data breach happens. But nothing's going to change. It's like at some point it just gets so out of control and it sucks to say that, but I don't think much is going to change from this. It's just, that's it. Like that's part of it, man. They're going to have access to your stuff. If you don't want it, delete it, you know, that, and that's it. Uh, my buddy Johnny says, question, I moved from Richmond to Augusta not too long ago, but I was having a conversation <laughs> with my wife about movers and I kid you not, I started getting phone calls about long distance moves. Whoa, that is crazy. So you can run ads on WhatsApp now because WhatsApp is a Facebook company. Like when oh, I was is it? Some, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, when I was putting in ads for uh, somebody, I'll just tell, I'll tell you my brother and his dentist uh, practice, you can do WhatsApp, you can do Instagram, obviously. You can do anything that Facebook owns. I don't know how they do WhatsApp advertising because I've never gotten an uh, advertisement on WhatsApp, but it's there. You can definitely get it, man. It's scary. It is scary. Shout out to htowndental.com. I'm going to spam you guys real quickly. Free consultation on braces, $150 down to get started. Fix your teeth, please. $150 down again. Free consultation, H-Town Dental, three locations. This is not an ad. This is just me telling you guys. Uh, hashtag ad. They do implants and general dentistry as well. Three locations. You think your brother uh, could give me a free whitening? He, Yes, he can. 
but he'll oh, tell you. But he will Here's what he'll he'll tell you what he tells me. Just go ahead and buy one from Amazon because it's cheaper for you in the long run. Like it's it'll do the same thing. It's cheaper. Mm. Yeah. Let's bring Jay Arnold on. I want to uh, get some of his thoughts. Our good friend. First time meeting you. He's a good friend of mine now. We're social friends. Uh, he's awesome. He's just one of the coolest dudes on social media. And he's just a cool dude in person as well. Jay, what's up, man? How you doing? What's up, guys? Uh, thanks for having me on. It's good to be Absolutely. here. Absolutely. What's so, up, Jay? How nice underwhelmed to meet you, buddy. Yeah, how it is nice to meet you, you as well. <laughs> <laughs> how underwhelmed are you by uh, Jose? Oh. oh, I think he's a great guy. <laughs> why, why are you being Why are you being that way, Raheel? Joking. First, none of first, the positivity. Yeah. First off, you don't pay me. After we have a whole public thing, a whole public fight about you not paying me to be on this podcast, and I kind of just let it go when I shouldn't have let it go, and now you're attacking me again. <laughs> well, I want you to meet my advocate, Jay Arnold. He's going to be uh, figuring out the money situation for you, so <laughs> we're going to set up a super fight. And Jay, you actually have a super fight coming up, right? Or did that I do. Uh, Friday. This is Friday at uh, Gillies in Dallas. I'm going to be competing in a... Uh, no gi super fight for fight to win. Pretty excited. It's my Dude, first time cool. in competition in a long time. So Jay used to play football. Uh, he did uh, Brazilian jiu jitsu growing up. He was in high school. We talked about this on the podcast uh, for those of you that are listening. And you committed yourself to getting back into it. Train harder. Uh, you actually participated in a tournament. I saw. Uh, you went and did a tournament, right? Uh, so I messed that one up. I didn't sign up in time, and uh, I didn't see that they had. Uh, I didn't see that they had a limit on how many people could sign up. So I was like, oh, you know, I'll do the normal thing and wait until the week of. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I checked it the week of, and they were like, "Yeah, registration's been closed for like a month." <laughs> yeah. So crazy, I didn't make that tournament, but I am getting at least uh, one match in. That's awesome, dude, man. I I'm excited for you. I can't wait. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, man? We're talking about the social dilemma. <laughs> By your reaction, I, I don't think you've seen it yet because you've probably been busy. But what are your some of your thoughts that you heard us talk about? Yeah, so I haven't uh, I haven't watched it yet, but I'm kind of thinking now I got to like log off and completely delete everything. Like I'm going to have to dip out in the middle of this podcast <laughs> and worry about what, what they're listening to out there. Uh, but no, I mean... I think I was kind of listening to the conversation like we've known for a while that social media is terrible. Yeah. Uh, I think the only difference now is we didn't realize quite how far the depths went. <laughs> yeah. It's just uh, the access these guys, the, these people have to, to our information is pretty terrifying, to be honest. Yeah, I think I think what you what you're saying is a good point. The depths is what startled me and the how intentional everything is. Like nothing is an accident. Like you don't see these like the example they use with the story that they're telling is the kids start seeing like these weird like conspiracy videos and none of those were accidents. And once he saw one, he kept seeing them over and over again and all of that was intentional and like that's what's causing the division and they know it's causing the division and there's nothing that's going to happen to stop it. Yeah. And, and that's where it gets interesting, right? Is what happens when you start getting a group that's pumped up, right? They talked about Pizzagate. Pizzagate was a thing that was just out there, right? In a lot of conspiracy groups. But then it started serving it to people because it noticed that, hey, a lot of people are interacting in this group and, and it's it's gaining a lot of traction. So let's let's show it to more people. Like, hey, you might be interested in this group, right? Because at the end of the day, the machine doesn't know what's content what content is in there what it's looking at is hey there's a lot of people here the algorithm is showing that a lot of people are interacting they're commenting they're sharing stuff from this let's see if more people will care about this right and, and let's do that and so because more people online again and engaged means more ads that you can get served and it doesn't know that it's doing this thing but it is and it's so scary and it's fine when it's us, you know, like we're getting served ads about shoes. It's fine. Or we're getting ads about cleaners or whatever it is. But when it starts pumping up opposite rhetoric or rhetoric that you believe in and amplifying it without fact checking, and it's that's a huge issue as well, man, it's going to get nuts out there. It's it's going to get even worse than it already is. Yeah, man, it's it's it, that that was like the most like 
deflating thing about it. And the the I I, I forget the country that they talk about. Rahul, do you remember the country they're talking? They talk about where you don't get a cell phone uh, unless you allow the providers to pre-install mm-hmm. Facebook on there. And the government of that country is using Facebook as a propaganda machine to basically like <laughs> just just make people hate Muslim people. Yeah. And I don't remember what country it is, but there's been a ma- mass exodus of, of Muslim people in that country because they're being persecuted because the government is intentionally making propaganda appear on Facebook to make people antagonize Muslim people. Yeah. And that's just like, like, and like Facebook knows this is happening and like, it doesn't matter. See, that doesn't change anything. That's the crazy thing is like, you would think Facebook knowing that's happening. It's just, they pull everything out of that country. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's, it's like you said, man, they're, they're trying to divide people almost like with the, with the way everything's going. Yeah. And, and this goes back to our conversation we've had for years on this podcast of when we see all this anger, hate online, and then you see people in person, it's like, nobody's like this. We're not like this. We don't. We're, I mean, there are instances. I'm not downplaying it. Yes, there are a lot of a-holes out there on every side of any conversation, right? Whether it be political, uh, p- uh, protest groups, whatever it is, it, there's, there's a lot of different things at play and there's bad people everywhere. I get that. But for the most part, all of us, we have like normal conversations, we have normal interactions. For the most part, we don't have any interactions with anybody because we don't talk to people anymore. But they're all mostly polite. But when you get online and you find a stranger, everyone is a dick. <laughs> like, it's so strange. It's so weird, man. It's one of the weirdest things I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it's... Uh... <laughs> I think the the one that always gets me is that conversation that Paul Felder had with the fan, uh, where the fan told him to stay retired because he was a better uh, better commentator than a fighter. Mm-hmm. And then Felder fires back with, "Did that make you feel better? Now would you say that to my face, man to man?" And the guy goes, "No, I said you kick my ass. That's why I said it on Twitter." Yeah. <laughs> It's like that simple, man, because uh, some of the stuff that people say, like they attack kids, they attack wives and spouses and all that. You wouldn't do that in person. Would never say in public. Yeah. Like you would get your, you would, there would be violence. Okay. Uh, yeah. There would be violence. I, I don't want to say you get your ass kicked because some people will take it a, a step further. Right. And, and <laughs> you might get killed, man. Like people are crazy out there. You don't do that. But uh, that's social media, man. <laughs> My man Jay here is like, hey, I thought we were going to talk about Whataburger. <laughs> like, hey, what happened here? It's getting really serious here. Yeah, um, I didn't get prepped for this. I would have watched the show if I knew. Yeah, Raheel. Nice job. No, we, just, we started a little bit later. So um, uh, we started a little bit later. And what happened was we – yeah, we, we were going to spend like 20 minutes on this, Jay. But we got we got started later. So now you got – put into this so sorry that's that's the way baseball go (laughs) yeah that's just the way it is um (laughs) some other things that i want to talk about before we get to the whataburger sandwich i want to do one experiment okay i think i've done this before but i'm gonna do it one more time everyone here on instagram right uh, on on screen and even if you're listening right now open up instagram how many scrolls before we get an ad okay open it up okay get a new screen refresh your screen how many scrolls before you're served with an ad? All one, right? literally one scroll. The second, one scroll. The yeah. second post. The second post I see is a is an ad. Wow. I got two. Me too. What was your What was your uh, ad, Jose? Uh, or go ahead, Jay. You go ahead. We got Chumba Casino. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but I think that's outside of Dallas, isn't it? Or no, it's like it's Oklahoma. Like, no, it's some like online game. Oh, okay. It says no purchase necessary. So that's good. I think that sounds like a great deal for you, Jay. Why don't you try it? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass on that one. I'm not much of a gambler even with fake money. Jose, what would you get? A lawyer to sue your podcast host? No, Amazon Prime Video. Boys? For upload, the the show that's made by, uh, I think, the people that made uh, The Office. It was okay. it was all right. I watched. I already watched it. It was kind of uh, like a Black Mirror, but different. Uh, but kind of trying to be funny, but actually yeah. not trying to be funny. Hmm. It was all right. Okay, so don't watch it. I mean, 
Yeah. I thought it was all right. I thought it. I thought it's it not going to be my bad. first recommendation on Amazon Prime, but it's not bad. Okay. Uh, so I trust you guys over the Instagram ad. Perfect. I love it. I got for whatever reason. I don't think my Instagram knows about my current situation, but uh, I got a sponsored ad for Cartier. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Yo, they're gonna be. They're like, damn, we wasted our money. <laughs> Got this broke ass. <laughs> That's weird. Okay, so there you go. Uh, Johnny just got DoorDash. Ro- uh, Roel just got Bones Coffee Company. And what is that? I don't know. See, advertising works. Damn Although it. I have. Yo, I have hey. purchased some weird stuff at night because it knows that about eleven o'clock, I start scrolling on Instagram. And I get hit with some fitness ads and <laughs> I bought I bought all sorts of nonsense on there. And like, yeah, you know, like there's some good with it too. You you find out about some cool stuff and then there's also the whole civil war thing. So there's that. Yeah. All right. So watch the social dilemma. Jay, that's your homework for an unnamed episode later. So we'll get it going. So Jay, I'm gonna pull this up, okay? Because I actually do this. Tell me how this came to be as I pull up a picture of this incredible water burger sandwich that you've made that has like it feels like it shouldn't exist but it does because you made it it probably shouldn't exist to be honest <laughs> it technically doesn't exist yeah it's a, it's an off the menu item <laughs> so, so yeah tell us about it i'm gonna pull it up here so that people can see it that are watching live as well well so the genesis for this idea was that uh there's an off menu item at mcdonald's uh which will go unnamed where you put a McChicken in between uh, two, uh, or in between a McDouble. Why do you uh, want? It, why, why do you want it to go unnamed? Is it because uh, of its, its yeah. foul nature? Yeah, I mean, we're just okay. gonna. Yeah, I, I think you know what I'm talking about here. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I got the brilliant idea to try to do that at Whataburger, uh, but instead of doing it with just a regular old like chicken patty. <laughs> I went ahead and went on board with the patty melt and then the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich. Uh, so it's only like, I want to say it's like 1900 calories. Uh, no chance. Calories. No. Yeah, so there it is. Like, that's the uh, honey barbecue chip, chicken strip sandwich uh, between the two patties of the patty melt. Oh my lord. And I, I started calling it the death trap. That's uh, a good no, look sheet. at this. That's a good nickname. I was gonna ask you what you called it. Yeah, because I like I could literally feel my arteries clogging the first time I ate one. <laughs> now, did you eat this and uh, did you have to cut it up or did you just? No, nah, dude, it I just went in it. for it. I just like squish it down and ate it. That's why you see the sauce pouring out like that Yo. off the side. You gotta just smash that down, dude. Wait, that is nuts, dude. <laughs> that is crazy. How many times have you had this? I've only done it like four or five times. I thought you were going to say one time. Well, I mean, you know, like that, that picture's from uh, probably like 2014. So I, it's been it's been going for a while. Yo, when was the last time you had it? <sighs> last time I had it was probably 2018. It's been a while. It's, it's a once every two years or, uh, you know, you got to eat it sparingly. You can't just uh, be going around ordering death traps for every meal, you know? Dang, that is intense, <laughs> man. I can't believe that. Like when we saw that, we couldn't we were like, no way this is real. Oh, it's, it, real. it's real. It's damn real. Have you ever tried <laughs> like going in there and telling them, hey, I want a, uh, I want a honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich. I want a patty melt, but I want the patty melt in between. Have you tried like sitting I, there and honestly, explaining like, it? I have not tried to explain it. The thing is, like <laughs> I'm pretty confident that Whataburger would do that. <laughs> Because they'll do pretty much anything you ask them to. Yeah. Uh, but, like, I, I don't want to, like, honestly, I don't want to be judged uh, that much by the uh, Whataburger people. The employee. <laughs> How many grams of fat does that have? Did you look that up or did you just have uh, I only calories? I only did calories. Yeah. Uh, it was like, eh, it's Let's probably see. a lot of fat. Know. Yeah, you can look it up. You have to combine the two. That's the, yeah. that's the fun part nutritional value because i've done this for um a dozen donuts from shipley and it's a lot like it is nuts man when you look at the grand total of a dozen donuts so let's look at this real quickly okay so this is for one all right gentlemen one has 61 grams of fat 940 calories 47 carbs which isn't bad 
49 grams of protein. That's not bad. I mean, that's good. Protein's protein. So double that uh, bad boy. So that's what, 132, uh, 122 grams of fat. And then we haven't even added the uh, chicken strips yet. (laughs) Here's how long it would take to burn off one. Okay. According to calorieking.com, that's the website I use for all of my calorie needs. Because he's the king. He's the king. Hashtag ad. Um, I don't know. what I just came across this website. It says, to burn off one Whataburger patty melt, it would take 78 minutes of swimming, 144 (laughs) minutes of cycling, uh, 108 minutes of jogging, or 262 minutes of walking, based on a 35-year-old female who is 5'7 and weighs 144 pounds. Nope. How do I adjust that? I want to do it for J. I want to see like the actual uh, breakdown for somebody's J size. You gotta you gotta pay the the subscription fee to yeah. that website <laughs> to customize the settings. Yeah, Calorie King's like, I'm not giving that answer away for free, a holes. <laughs> <laughs> and I got served with a uh, with a. Please log ad. in. You know, I got hit with an ad about the election. So there you go. Boom. You know what would have been get... incredible if you got a fast food ad? Oh, that see, that, that makes website. sense. I'm like Whataburger Let's should see. be on that. See? Let's Jose, see if we get a Whataburger ad on the on the second check on Instagram. Okay, let's see. Everybody open up your Instagram again. And let's see what ads we're gonna get hit with after this conversation. Let's see. All right. Second Refreshing. ad. I just no saw Baker Mayfield. What'd you get? Nothing. I got Baker East Mayfield's Bay. face. East, East Bay. Bay. Wow. Yeah. I got I got Heineken. So I mean, that's pretty true. To <laughs> You're you, trending right? in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. See, they 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 do get a few things right, Jay. <laughs> and then hey, and then I got Pacifico. So <laughs> yeah, then you got an alcohol problem, bro. <laughs> but I think, I think they're, they're they know I'm getting ready to celebrate uh, after this uh, this fight, win or lose. I'm celebrating. Now, have you been eating clean for the fight? Uh, so I, I haven't had to, like the weight class we're fighting yet. Uh, me and the, my opponent, uh, it's two twenty and up. Uh, okay. So to answer your question, I've been eating somewhat healthier, but uh, I haven't gone like full fight diet. Okay. If you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but like not even to like get your body because like I mean no I reason. definitely yeah. I definitely cut back on the fried foods. Okay, uh, with Good. the exception, I mean. Technically wasn't fried. The the breakfast tacos this weekend that I made. Yeah, I was good. That's yo, a, I saw that them. That was good, right? Jose was like, yo, this is pretty good. And Jose is from that culture. So he, that, his that words my, mean more. It, it means well, more. You know, like, I don't, I don't want to call you it see, like... Uh, you see the jersey hanging back there? <laughs> this, this is my culture. I, I don't want to like call it an authentic take on uh, breakfast tacos by any means. But, you know, I feel like they're... Uh, Good enough to uh, serve the company. What do you think, Jose? You approved it, right? I definitely approved it. It was it was a little uh, it was a little uh, gentrified, but uh, I'll, I approve it. I'll allow it. Gentrification is just borrowing, so it's cool. It's fine. Like it's and it's appreciating. That sounds like a bar Jay Z is going to spit next year. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Um, okay, big news in the world of sports, by the way. Hey, uh, so hold on, before I move on, Jay, are, is a fight going to be streamed or anything, or is it in person only? Like, can uh, we so, watch and support you? Uh, I mean, you can. Uh, it'll be on Flow Grappling. Okay. Uh, which I don't know what their charge is, uh, and I'm not going to tell you to buy it if it's expensive. Uh, I know the tickets in person are sixty dollars. And I told my parents that uh, you don't even need to worry about coming. Like that's a that's a lot for a ticket to watch Damn. me probably get thrown on my head at some point. <laughs> sixty bucks now, sixty bucks in this in this climate, in this economy, like, right? Yeah, that's a lot. Sixty dollars, <laughs> Jay. Are you economy? getting it? Look, I don't want to get in your money, but are you getting ticket sales uh, cut or what? Uh, I mean that may be the rumor. I don't know for okay, sure, yeah. and I don't want to yeah. spread any lies out there. No, no, we don't want to say uh, much more because I don't want the IRS to come down on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I don't want the, uh, you know, this walk on right back into A&M and to the bag, man. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> oh no, those Lord. are, sto- those kidding, are stories kidding. we need. Yeah. Okay, what's the most you ever got at A&M from a bag, man? Uh, so it's actually at Ole Miss, right? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Throw them under the bus. I never, I never got, I mean, they already got thrown under the bus. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I, I, Sadly, I was not good enough to have an experience with Bagman. 
Damn. You never got one of those handshakes? No, no. Damn. It was a handshake like, hey, buddy, you got to move. <laughs> we got to get the miles. Yeah. He's like, hey, buddy, actually, hey, how you doing? Keep it moving. <laughs> hey, buddy, get out of the way. <laughs> okay. MJ, Michael Jordan, he now is a NASCAR owner. This is out of nowhere. I, I haven't heard anything about this. Jay, did you hear anything about this other than when Shams talked about it? Uh, so this was a rumor that was brewing for a little bit just because mm-hmm. Denny Hamlin has wanted to start a team for a while. And uh, Hamlin and, and Michael Jordan have a, a friendship that goes back over a decade now. Uh, and they play golf together quite a bit. And as, uh, you know, some of the NASCAR reporters are talking about it, I mean, the topic of starting a team together had come up a few times. Uh, so this wasn't necessarily a huge surprise. Uh, I think the timing was just right. Uh, and w- we'll see. I think uh, so. Right now in NASCAR, uh, Toyota has one top level team, and that's uh, Joe Gibbs Racing. Uh, they had a satellite team that was kind of Gibbs affiliated, but not fully Gibbs. Uh, and that team's now stepping away. So there were talks in the garage about uh, Toyota looking for a new satellite team. Uh, and I think with MJ stepping in, it was just perfect timing. So how so are there only like an X amount of teams? And I saw that he bought the charter from a German company, I believe, as I was reading up on this. Um, are there only an X amount, or can you can you create a new one as well? Uh, so yeah, you can just create a new one. Okay. Uh, the charter just kind of helps with. I, I, and I don't don't quote me on this. Uh, I get pretty much all of my information from uh, Jeff Gluck at the Athletic. Uh, great. Uh, motorsports author uh, for them over there. Uh, but I think what the deal is with the charter is it's basically easier to qualify for races. Mm. Uh, those charters kind of protect teams a little bit more. Uh, unchartered teams, I mean, there's only a few teams that have like the top amount of funding, but it goes the top teams, uh, just other charter teams that are, are smaller in nature. And then unchartered teams. So trying to break into the sport without a charter is a, is a really tough deal. Okay, gotcha. So yeah. how soon yeah. uh, uh, can we expect the Jumpman b- Bubba uh, gear to drop? Uh, dude, I'm pretty excited about this. Like, uh, he already has a lot of sponsorship money uh, just from deals that he's gotten himself. Uh, Cash App. Columbia, a few others have jumped on board with him. Uh, and now you put the marketing machine of uh, Jordan Nike brand behind Jordan him. brand, yeah. It's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I'll, I'll so how, there's going to be a lot of money pouring in. So how does that how does that work in terms of sponsorships for individual drivers like that? Like he can easily just jump from whatever team he's on now to go over to the Jordan Hamlin team. Like is there not contracts that they have to like play out? How does that work? So some teams, uh, they sign their sponsors to cars and the, the, the sponsors end up signing with the owner and sometimes sponsors sign with drivers. Uh, Denny Hamlin's a great example of that. He's had FedEx with him his whole career. Uh, that wasn't necessarily a Gibbs deal so much as it was a sponsor coming with him. And it's actually where you see a lot of like the smaller teams. Uh, they'll pick up a driver based off just that driver's sponsorship money coming in. Mm. Uh, so you'll see, uh, take for example, uh, Paul Menard. Uh, he, his family owns the Menards uh, hardware stores up in uh, Wisconsin, that area. Uh, so he was sponsored by Menards stores his whole life. Well, teams see the sponsorship money that he's already bringing in, and it kind of helps him to secure a ride. Okay, so mm. so the benefit would be if Jose has a sponsor, and I go with a bigger. Uh, organization or an order uh, team, I have access to better cars, uh, better crew pit, um, access to races, it seems like. So that that's why you would jump up a class, right? Right. Uh, okay. And, I mean, you'll see, like, the, the major teams in NASCAR, your, your Penske, uh, Hendrick, uh, Gibbs, and uh, Stuart Haas are, are your four probably top-tier teams. Uh, there's a few right under that, uh, Richard Childress Racing, uh, Roush, Fenway, uh, that are under there. 
but you'll see the top sponsors like at Hendrick, they sign deals with the team as opposed to drivers. Uh, but I mean, there was, there was some, uh, you know, I haven't looked into all the numbers. I know DuPont was with Hendrick for forever, uh, sponsoring Jeff Gordon. Lowe's was with, was with Jimmy Johnson for a while. You see those big brand names that hop on a car and are just kind of able to pour in money, and it's a winning relationship because those cars are constantly running at the front. They get all the airtime. Okay, gotcha. So here's a good question, and this is uh, something that Darren Rovell also tweeted that I was kind of – confused about because he said and again it's darren rovell i know we talked about this before jay he's such a he's he's such a he's a tool he's the a, worst. a necessary he's a necessary evil of social media no he's not he caught, the, he, caught the, he, caught the, he caught the block for me necessary Actually, my ass i'll tell you all this we talk about dividing the country but i think darren rovell is one of the only people i've seen bring the country together yeah. Against him, maybe okay. maybe we need him. Maybe you know, anytime, he's the great uniting force. One of my favorite things on Twitter is anytime he tweets anything stupid, immediately somebody posts the gif of him running the forty. And it's, so, <laughs> it's so bad. It's one of the it's worst. Like he runs like he has no hamstrings. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's like a hundred percent. He'll always come back with, "Yeah, but I finished the marathon." Like, okay, dude. I know a lot of people that have fish mar- finished marathons that aren't that athletic. Like, yeah, it's a huge accomplishment in endurance. Eh, but I, come on. You can still look goofy doing it. Running, yeah. that is. Yeah, uh, and then, like, it's just. He's bad. He, okay. He's, so, he's the worst. so what was Darren's question? Uh, Darren's was, this is going to inject great energy into NASCAR. And then this fo- follow-ups, uh, follow-up to Nab. Nabil's question here, excuse me, is do you see NASCAR attracting a new demographic with the MJ name on a team and potentially a Jumpman logo on a car? I think you're just looking at so many younger people with MJ in there. Uh, you get the, I mean, MJ puts out some some cool NASCAR merch with with the Jumpman logo on it. You're going to see kids rocking that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it's a, uh, so yeah, I think he can bring a younger demographic. Uh, it'll, I mean, it'll all depend on how Bubba kind of works out there. I think that'll be another way to see how this is going to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, if Bubba starts winning races, it's just going to grow the popularity exponentially. I think that if he, if he wins races and not only wins races, but does it in a fashion that is must watch, like, you know, maybe after the race, he does, does something or says something, or if he just blows out the competition, I, I, I don't know. I don't watch NASCAR, Jay. So uh, you know, please excuse my ignorance here, but if, if there's something he can do where it's like, dude, you gotta watch this, then it's it's next level. Because with PSG, you know, that was a huge partnership for Jordan Brand because that's the only relatable one I can bring up. Jose's rolling his eyes, but if they didn't have Neymar <laughs> and uh, Mbappe there, they're not must watch, right? Like they're must watch for their fans and their hardcore fans. But nobody's tuning in for that. And I don't even know now how much they're tuning in just to watch because of Jordan brand, right? Like there has to be a catch at the end of the day that brings people in after the hook is there. Yeah. It's the thing about this is I just feel like it's going to be such a uh, such a win-win for both, both sides of the deal. Uh, obviously, NASCAR is getting a huge brand name, huge figure in sports. And then on the other hand, MJ is getting exposure to a new crowd too. Uh, you know, there's a lot of folks in NASCAR that are, live and die by NASCAR, won't watch anything else. Mm. You know, MJ is going to be able to reach those folks. And at the same time, you know, it's it's going to be, man, I get excited talking about it because look at, like, let's be honest here. MJ doesn't do this. Are we talking about this right now? Are we, do, no, are we bringing up NASCAR? No no chance. But here's the other. We talked about NASCAR side. once this year. Here's the other thing. Now it's going to be even harder for us to pick up any Jordan gear, Jose, because now we've got a whole new crowd coming in trying to get some off whites. Mm, <laughs> that's a good point. I didn't consider that. <laughs> you, this is a horrible partnership. Let's cancel Damn. it right now, Jay, because we'll never hit on anything. But we don't need to. Shout out to Jordan Brand. <laughs> shout, who shout you're shouting out jordan brand that's why that's why i gave the shout out not you <laughs> man hashtag hashtag ad. Ad. no it's not a real ad okay uh so that was cool jay I'm, I'm glad this news broke on such a night that you could join us and we could talk about it it just worked out that way so 
I get to drop to my it. NASCAR expertise. It's I know. Not often as, that I get to do that. As soon as I saw <laughs> that and you tweeted, I was like, yes, because Jay like knows exactly what to talk about today. So that's cool, man. I'm pumped. Yeah, it worked out well. Good timing on that. I I get out of the gym, I see that, and I'm like, yep, pretty excited. And then I, whenever you comment on it, I'm like, yep, got to ask him if we can talk about that. I Absolutely. mean, let's go. Absolutely. Jose, anything else for Jay? I mean, we just we just got to figure out this money thing, Jay. I agree. I feel, I mean, I feel like I am severely yeah. underpaid by Raheel, and I'm hoping you can help mend this mend this friendship, mend this relationship. We're going to get the free Jose hashtag going on Twitter. Yo. Okay, Jose, I'll give you a deal right now, okay? I'm not going to tell right. you the number. Either do you want 10 bucks on Venmo? I'll send you 10 bucks right now on Venmo or you get the balance of my Venmo account right now. <laughs> Ooh. So you have to pick. This is a gamble now. Do okay. You want, do you want the balance in the account? Okay. Or do you want I already 10 bucks? Know my no, 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 no. no. No, no, no. You gotta Jay, talk to him. You got to let the fates I... decide. Flip a coin. Flip a mm. coin? What see, are you see here's, what are you leaning Here's for? my thought. My thought is take what's in your Venmo account because say it's $2 or it's 50 cents. It'll be a funny bit. And also I won't feel bad taking money from someone who's unemployed. So I partially well, unemployed, pa- partially, part-time partially, employed, partially unemployed now. <laughs> so that so that's why I'm leaning towards just taking the gamble on the Venmo balance. Mm. But ten dollars is ten dollars. Ten bucks is ten bucks. You do remember there was a lot of masks that were sold, and there's a lot of uh, no chance that's still in your Venmo. You don't know, man. You, you don't know. You, you've got you've got yoga pants to buy, kombucha to buy. That's a good point. Vinyl records to buy. There's but no n- chance. There's... But none of those services use Venmo. There's no chance there's more than two $2.30 in, like, in your Venmo. Whoa. Jay, what, what's your call on this one? Uh, I think that, you know, I, I think I would take the $10. But I do want to know what was in the Venmo. Okay. And it's not my decision, you know. I, I still think flipping a coin, you know, I have one right here. Okay. All right. Heads? All right. Let, let's, yeah, let's do it. Let's do the let's do the coin flip. Heads. All right. I get the ten dollars. I gotta figure Tails. out how to like actually see the coin. All right. There we go. So you get one side with a, a number on it because this is a peso apparently. Uh, <laughs> Even better. <laughs> so we got one with the with the eagle with the snake on it, and then one side with the one on it. Uh, so we'll say the eagle is heads. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the one is tails. All right, so the eagle gets you ten bucks. So the one uh, gets me the minimum balance. Oh, all right, we didn't see that, right? <laughs> you got the one. Oh, so just oh, the balance. Oh, get the Venmo balance. Yo, oh, that is damn. a Let whole dollar thirty cents. Dollar seventy five. <laughs> Let's send you that <clears throat> that dollar seventy five. There it is. I feel like you guys set me up. Yep, we got him, Jay. I mean, it we wouldn't be him. just the face, so you'll have to talk it up with them. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen. My lawyer wasn't him. here for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a legally binding contract. All right, everyone follow Jay on Twitter at jarnoldtamu85. Uh, you are a great follow, man. Best of luck this weekend. Go kick some ass, and it's good to see you getting into this and, and taking on a fight, and we'll see what's next, man. Yeah, I can't wait, man. Thanks again for having me on. All right, man. Enjoy Good and luck, uh, buddy. yeah, make sure you have a, a a trip to Whataburger afterwards. You deserve it. Yeah. Man. Oh yeah. Trip to yeah. Whataburger, then Applebee's to get drinks afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> a white man's dream. Look at hey, Jay living his life. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> he's the best man he's such a good dude what'd you think jose i told you he's awesome yeah he was he was he was really nice he kind of screwed me at the end with the with the peso but uh <laughs> threw me off my game there with the peso okay one last thing before we get out of here i just have this rant because i have to do it because i'm not on sports oh, boy. anymore um why is everyone so upset about the houston texans i yesterday was incredible to watch um you know after the game they got their ass kicked by the ravens I think everyone expected it. I didn't see anybody picking a game where it was going to be close. There's two different levels to this, right? Like the Ravens and the Chiefs are on this level. They're up here, right? And you can maybe include the 49ers in there and maybe another team that makes its way to that tier a little bit later on. But right now, those two teams are the best in the NFL. 
They've got young quarterbacks. Their defense is playing out of its mind. They've got really good coaches, and they've done it, right? You saw the regular season success with the Ravens. They didn't do it in the playoffs, but it's not the playoffs. We saw the Chiefs do what they did, and they won a Super Bowl. The expectations are different for those teams. The Texans don't have those expectations, yet fans are still upset. Why are fans so upset about this? I'm so confused about why fans are upset that the Texans got rolled. That was That's exactly what was supposed to happen. It's- what do you think was going to happen? It's the it's misplaced for uh, frustrations. Mm-hmm. It's the fact this team has been so stagnant uh, for so many years, and you're coming off the off season where they trade uh, without a doubt their best player to a team, and where he he what, what was the stupid stat uh, Hopkins put up this weekend? Like the most receptions ever for a Cardinal in two games, or some something yeah. cr- something dumb like that. Uh, I think it's misplaced frustrations, and I think it's just a buildup of years of. Well, sh- here goes another year with Bill O'Brien of just. But that's it. But if that apathy is already there, why are you upset? Like you got to understand. Like you- you're wasting your energy on this team, and that's why. Just two years ago, I was like, man, I'm apathetic towards the Houston Texans because this team hasn't shown anything in terms of being able to run a proper franchise. Or let me say this: pro- this franchise hasn't shown anything to run a great team, put the right people in charge to make the right decisions. Um, they've given in to Bill O'Brien, whether it be the head coach or the GM, and things have been a mess. So, yeah, be, like I thought everyone else was apathetic about this. And I understand we have football back. It's a big game. It's exciting. And it's it's fun to root for your home team and all that. But come on. What, what did you guys expect? This is Bill O'Brien who traded, as you mentioned, the best receiver, right? The second best receiver or the first best receiver in franchise history. And he's still in his prime and it sold you on this bill of goods like, hey, guys, w- w- more people. And, and you know what? Deshaun needs to improve as a quarterback. He won't have his blanket anymore and all that. No, you know what? Give me give me that. I hope my quarterback leans on one receiver. You know what? It's okay. Things are going to be fine because that, that receiver is really damn good. And I understand spreading the ball around. But why, then what kind of weapons did you get, right? So right. fans, I can't believe like we were also upset and apathetic. Like they're not going to do anything this year. And yet, yesterday, you guys took the bait. You got trolled by Bill O'Brien, and you were upset. So I just wanted to get that off my chest because I was Bill blown always away wins, by this. Damn it. Yeah, I was blown. I, I thought most of us weren't even going to tweet about it because we were so apathetic about this team. Yeah, I, I just don't – I don't think it's at that point yet. Like, do you don't think these the, the, that game yesterday would have been sold out if not the circumstances we're in right now? It would be sold out, but I don't think that's a good measure of apathy or not because people might have just been going to watch the Ravens. Like, I would have watched the Ravens regardless because I want to see Lamar Jackson. You would have gone see Lamar? Okay. Yeah, right? Like, I think I think a better measure of this would be if it was Texans versus Jags. Would that game be sold out? I don't think it would be. People would go see Minshew. Yo, <laughs> his ass. Man, he had a chance to do something good yesterday, and he couldn't do it. Um, and, and Johnny says, that's exactly why, because they are fans. I understand that, but there's levels of fans, right? Like you can be all in on your team, but you can be a realist and realize that this team sucks. This team isn't going to be better than last year. Why would they be better than last year? They've got a harder schedule. They've got less weapons. Now, David Johnson, this running, this great running back that you traded, uh, Deandre Hopkins for you had. A third and one didn't give it to him. Then you're like, "Hey, we're gonna go on fourth and down, fourth down and fourth and one, and we're not gonna give it to him." So what's the? So don't sell me on this whole thing like David Johnson's awesome and David Johnson's gonna have a great year. You don't believe that because you knew you were gonna go for it on that uh, fourth down, right? You don't just make that's not a decision. You go, "Oh man, that last play didn't work. Let's do it again." No, that's one you go. Hey, we got two downs to get one yard, and you didn't use David Johnson. That speaks volumes about David Johnson to me as well. Yeah, man, I'm with you on on the on the side that I'm totally apathetic, but I just don't think a lot of people are wired that way to just mm-hmm. be like, oh, okay, whatever. This seems not good, so I'm not going to root for them anymore. I think that part of it is us have been yeah. being in this industry that kind of just allows us to learn mm-hmm. or be able to separate ourselves from it. But a lot of people can't do that. A lot of people, that's fair. a lot of people just don't don't exist that way. That's fair, and, and I guess look, you're always going to believe that your team has a shot, but damn, be a be a realist about this. Your team didn't have a shot against the Chiefs. That's why I wasn't upset. I wasn't I wasn't ticked off. Your team didn't have a shot against the Ravens, although there was a pretty good game plan and and they actually did pretty decent on defense 
for all things considered, right? They gave up 10 points as well, right? The pick six and then a, a field goal, a short field goal right after the Kiki uh, turnover. <clears throat> so you did all things considered. You did pretty decent on defense. It was a good game plan, but you, come on. Even the, the a diehard fan didn't think they had a shot yesterday. <laughs> So like why all and the whole point it get it gets back to why were fans upset like it makes no sense that was it sports update for you there I had to get my old uh, sports radio juices going there Jose get a little monologue out there for you guys because it was just bothering me and I don't I hate tweeting that stuff because then it just turns into nonsense you know what I don't want to hear it from everybody I like a one way street I'm gonna give you my information and that's it. And then if you have thoughts on it, cool. I'll probably not read them. I don't know. You gotta, you gotta do the, the new Twitter feature where only people who you who mention can no. reply to it. <laughs> such a... That way, and that way, no one can reply to you. People could quote to you. You could just choose not to see those quote tweets. Yeah, that one. If you put that feature on a tweet, then you're wishing that people reply to it, right? Because every time yeah. I've seen it, I'm like, oh, I want to. Res- oh, you know what? I'm gonna respond to this. I'm gonna respond to this. Okay. Um, no click or no click because we're out of time. It's late. It's Tropical Storm Beta still. I'm going to go drive around. I'll text you, see if there's any flooding. Cause it's about Take to the floaties. Rain. Yo, it's about to rain even harder in my area till like 2 a.m. It's oh, all goodness. orange and red. So hopefully everything's good. Be careful, buddy. Take the floaties. All right, Jose. I'm going to send you $1.75. I appreciate you doing this <laughs> podcast with me and spending some For time with me on a Monday night. $1.75? Hey, man. Invest in it. Maybe uh, it grows, right? Ten years from now, it's going to be worth a dollar eighty-two. So that's good. Okay. All right, man. I'll talk to you later. Stay spicy.